Hey everybody, let's take a look at some more political excess. Today, let's do my updated 2022 governor's prediction. I did not make many changes on this map from the previous map. Nearly all the primaries are complete, and many of the campaigns are just about to start heating up as we get past Labor Day. We'll get a lot more polls, we'll get better polls, we'll see how things are going to shape up. So to be safe, I kept most things the same. So let's get right into this. Safe states, over a 10-point margin, likely 5 to 10 points, lean under 5 points until 1 point or less. So let's start with the safe Democratic states. Hawaii, there's a remote chance that it can get under 10, but it is very unlikely. Back up to California, Colorado, I don't see Polis losing by less than 10. Illinois, that would be safe for Pritzker. New York, I thought that had a chance to get under 10 at one point, and it still might. But as of now, I'm keeping it at safe for Hochul. Massachusetts will flip for the Democrats. They haven't even had their primary yet, but it appears it'll be Jeff Deal for the Republicans, and he's not a good fit for Massachusetts. Rhode Island, Dan McKee might have some primary trouble, but in the general, it's probably going to be safe. And Maryland... Wes Moore is poised to flip that for the Democrats, barring some sort of major upset. Now the safe states for the Republicans. Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska in that open seat. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, South Carolina. I know Trafalgar had a poll out that showed it at an 8-point margin. It is possible it gets under 10, but for now I'm going to keep it at safe. Ohio, I think Mike DeWine is poised to win that easily by 10 points. And finally, the other two states, they really love Phil Scott in Vermont and Chris Sununu in New Hampshire. Now on to the likely Democratic states. First is Minnesota. Tim Walls is likely to beat Scott Jensen. That race could get down to a lean margin once some more polls come out. Recent ones don't show Walls walking away with it. For now, I'm going to say it's over a five-point margin for Walls. And over in Connecticut, the rematch there between incumbent Ned Lamont and Bob Stefanowski doesn't seem like it will be as narrow as back in 2018, so we'll leave that at likely for now. Now, the likely Republican states. First is Alaska. Mike Dunleavy is likely to win, and probably by a five- to ten-point margin, over former Governor Bill Walker. Next up is Texas. I moved that from safe to a likely, just to be safe. I think it will be somewhere between a 7 and a 12 point win for Greg Abbott. It definitely could be over 10, but it could be under 10 in the high single digits. Next is Iowa. This is borderline safe. As of now, it appears Kim Reynolds, the Republican incumbent, she's going to cruise to re-election over the Democrat there. It's not a ton of polls, but Reynolds is heavily favored. And finally, down in Florida, Ron DeSantis, I think he will win that anywhere between five and nine and a half points. It's Florida. It's hard to imagine a landslide there. DeSantis is polarizing. Charlie Crist, he's been through this several times before, but based on all the polls, the national environment, and many of the issues, DeSantis is a moderate to heavy favorite. Now the lean states for the Democrats. First is Oregon. This is one of the more fascinating races, I think. Tina Kotek, the Democrat, I think is favored over Christine Drazen. But as of now, by only a low single-digit margin, there is a third independent candidate running there, Betsy Johnson. She's polling even in the 20s. We do need to see some recent polls to get a better idea of this race. Next is Nevada. The incumbent, Steve Sisolak, the Democrat. I just see voters not wanting to oust him after one term. I think Joe Lombardo is going to make it close, and he could win it. But as of now, I'm going to say Sisolak holds on by two to three points. Next is New Mexico. Michelle Luan Grisham is favored over Mark Ranchetti, or Mark Ranchetti, however you want to say it. But as of now, I think we're looking at a mid-single-digit type of margin. Next, let's go over to Michigan. This race has yet to really start heating up. Tudor Dixon is probably going to make it close. I think it will be by under five points, but as of now, Gretchen Whitmer is going to have an edge. 
finally, over in Maine, the matchup there between two governors, Janet Mills and Paul LePage. I'm going to give the edge to the incumbent Mills. There's not really any recent polls. This is another sleeper kind of a race that has really yet to get going, but we'll see what happens over the next two months. And let's go on to the lean states for the Republicans. First is Arizona. It's another interesting race. I think Carrie Lake is going to win it in the end. She's certainly branded as polarizing and risky, but I think Katie Hobbs in this environment is going to be viewed as just a little bit too mild, a little bit too establishment, and Carrie Lake will win that by at least a couple points. It does have potential to go either way. And the other lean state is in Georgia. I think most people would agree that lean is the correct characterization for this race. Brian Kemp, he's led in, I think, every poll by single digits over Stacey Abrams. It'll be another rematch, and Kemp appears favored to win. Uh, the tilt states, there's only one for the Democrats. That is in Pennsylvania. Doug Mastriano, he's regarded as a little too out there, a little too fringe. The polls do show Josh Shapiro ahead, not by a huge margin. I am interested to watch these debates and to see what happens. But for now, I'm going to give Shapiro a very slight edge. And the last two states are tilts for the Republicans in Kansas. It's a moderately red state. It's a red-leaning environment. Laura Kelly, she is the incumbent. She's trying to play it down the middle. That is her strength. But considering everything, I think Derek Schmidt, the attorney general, should be able to eke out a win there. It's going to be close. Republicans don't want to underestimate Laura Kelly. So that is a tilt for the Republicans. And finally, in Wisconsin... Another super close race. Tony Evers, the incumbent Democrat, he might be able to hold on. However, considering the environment, I still do have him nearly losing by under one point. We'll see how Tim Michaels, the Republican, ends up doing over the next two months. But this race seems to be guaranteed to be within a few points either way. So that is my map. That would result in 28 Republican governors, 22 Democratic governors, I'm sure you may disagree on one or two of these. That's fine. But let me know in the comments down below. Do you mostly agree with this map or do you disagree with half of these states? Please let me know down below. And if you enjoy this channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.